Hey, what's going on, Campus Revolutionaries? What an awesome time we have together to just be able to come and just receive a fresh impartation that comes from the Lord. I am super, super excited on what God has in store for us. But before anything else, I would like to honor those people and pastors and leaders, you know, that has been a influence to us. I would like to honor the father of the vision, Pastor Cesar Castellanos, and also our national coordinator, Bishop Oriel Baliano and Pastora Geraldine. I would like also to honor our, all our national 12 leaders, okay, our national pastors. And I would like to make mention my pastor and my dad, Bishop Hurley Montes and Mama Nelly. You know what? These pastors we have, they, they truly have the heart for the next generation. And we just want to honor them and bless them and love them because of their, you know, love for us. Me and, and Judith really is so humbled and privileged to be, you know, able to come and be part of this awesome, wonderful Campus Revolution 2020. Amen, amen. I'm excited for today. I am excited for today. Are you excited? Amen. You know what? Um, I just want to share something that the Holy Spirit has laid in my heart. And um, I, I believe and I'm confident that where we are right now, maybe for some it's a, it's, a, it's a disappointment, but I believe that this is a divine appointment from God for the church, for His sons and daughters to rise up and take its place. The real challenge today is to see what God is doing. May ginagawa po si Lord. It's to see what God is doing more than what the world is doing. That's the real challenge today because God is moving. God is moving. And I want to remind the church, this is our glorious moment. This is our glorious moment. We are living in the days that God is going to pour out His presence, His Holy Spirit in our midst. And so today, I want you to declare with me, God is moving. Come on, say with me. God is moving in my life, in my family, in my church, and in my nation. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I want to share with you today how to usher the move of God in our generation. How to usher the move of God in our generation. I want you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 31. Primarily, this scripture speaks about, you know, Apostle Paul, his acceptance and his rejection. But later on, you know, the overall here is this, the, the state of the church, okay? Ito po, nakikita po natin dito, that the church as of this time, is experiencing a great move of God, revival, peace, strength, edification, okay, in the church. Now, in verse 31, sabi dito, then the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, Samaria, experienced peace, and thus was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord, come on, say with me, fear of the Lord, and then the engagement of the Holy Spirit, say with me, engagement of the Holy Spirit, there we go, and the church increase in number. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to sit down under the ministry of your word and be changed. This is your word. These are your people, oh God. Make the connection so that our time together and our life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Someone asked me, Pastor Joel, how can we have campus revolution without a campus? Okay, think about it. How can you have a campus revolution without a campus? Now, when that question began to pop up in my head, I begin to remember uh, the Samaritan woman. Remember yung time na yon when this Samaritan woman began to ask Jesus, Jesus, um, asan nga ba yung proper place of worship? Is it in the mountain or is it in Jerusalem? Because this woman is so concerned of the physical location for worship. But then Jesus is more concerned not just of the physical location but the heart's condition. And so when this question pops up in my head, I begin to, you know, see this 
in a campus revolution way, that we need to understand that campus revolution primarily is not really about the physical campus. Campus revolution is about preparing the next generation. It is bringing a spiritual influence in the hearts and the minds of the young people to the point of total submission to Christ Jesus our Lord. It's bringing back, you know, the, the confidence. It's bringing back the, the standard. It's bringing back the culture. It's, it's bringing back, you know, the, who they are, their identity in Christ. And, and that is campus revolution is all about. So it's not about the physical campus. It's about the people. And so if you're going to ask me, is campus revolution possible online? Well, I should say, if Facebook is changing the world, if Instagram is changing the world, if TikTok is changing the world, if these you know, platforms are really discipling this generation, then I will not allow this platform to take my place in discipling my generation. And dami nga dyan, nagpo-pour out pa sa Facebook rather than the cell leader nila, di ba? Ang dami nga dyan, nagpo-pour out sa, sa Instagram or sa TikTok rather than their leaders. And so for me, discipleship, you know, campus revolution can also happen in the internet world. But we have to set a standard. We have to set a principle because I believe that the greatest move of God is about to happen in the internet world. Amen? And so today, how can we usher the move of God in this generation? Now, I want you to understand this kasi. The modern, para sa akin kasi, the modern tree of the knowledge of good and evil is actually the internet. You can find good things in the internet, and you can also find evil things in the internet. That is why we have to screen our people. We have to protect our people. We have to prepare this generation in order for them to effectively usher the move of God in this season. And so what we have read kanina mga kapatid is a picture of a church, a glorious church, a church that is, you know, full of the Spirit of God, a church that is, uh, you know, um, receiving the peace of God, the strength of God. And this could be a great example for us. I, I can see here that, you know, this is, this is going to be my church. This is going to be your church. But we need to prepare the next generation. In my heart, mga kapatid, I want to see a revival. I want to see a move of God. But in order for us to see that, in order for us to experience that, then we have to prepare this generation for us to truly usher the move of God. And there are three things here that the Word of God made mention that I believe is going to be the foundation for the move of God. It's going to be the foundation for us to usher the move of God in our life. Number one, we need to bring back the fear of the Lord in this generation. We need to bring back the fear of the Lord in this generation. Ngayon kasi, we are so focused on the fire of God, but we don't have the fear of God. We are so focused on the passion, but we don't have the purity. We are so focused on the relationship, but we don't have the reverence. And so today, I want to challenge all the pastors and leaders to prepare your people, not just physically, not just mentally, but prepare their hearts to have that fear of the Lord as the foundation of their life. The Word of God says that the fear of God is the foundation of wisdom. Now, wisdom there, mga kapatid, is not just about learning or knowing how to do things. The wisdom there is not just about the brilliance, you know, yung, yung competence mo or your intelligence mo. That's part of it. But I would say that wisdom na sinasabi dito is learning, knowing how to judge between the godly things and the worldly things. That is wisdom. See, when a young person have a fear of the Lord, then his decision, his wisdom, it's not just about intelligence, knowledge, all of these things, but his wisdom is about discerning and judging. Lord, para ba sa to? Or this, is, is this godly? Is this, go, is this will give glory to the Lord? Or not? It's between godliness and worldliness. 
living in wisdom is increasing that godliness over worldliness in your life. Can I get an amen? Amen? So I pray today that we are going to live in the fear of the Lord. Don't just desire for the fire and the passion and relationship. But right now, genuinely ask the Lord, Lord, I need the fear of God. Alam mo, I begin to cry in my heart because akala natin, madadala lang natin yung generation na to by being radical, by being different, by having lights and sounds and good stuff, no? Akala natin magiging effective na tayo. But I want to tell you something. It's not enough to be radical. It's not enough to have the good stuff. It's not enough to, 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 you know, to have the right, you know, to be different. What we need today more than ever is to set a standard of the fear of the Lord in our heart, in this generation. Radicalism cannot cut the extremity of this generation. We need to set a standard and say, God, whatever it is that hurts you, whatever it is that is displeasing to you, I will not touch it. I will not have to do something about it. Lord, I am hands off sa mga ganitong bagay. We need to have that fear of the Lord in us. Yung pag sinabi mong fear of the Lord, this is the key to holiness in us. Without holiness, we cannot see the move of God. And so this generation, more than ever, needs to be baptized with the fear of God. And I pray as you're watching today, I pray that the Holy Spirit is moving in your heart and convicting you so that your fear, the fear of God, the respect, the reverence that you have for God is going to rise up to the next level. We need to right-size God. Kasi kung ang tingin natin kay Lord is hanggang Savior lang, ang tingin natin kay Lord, you know, hanggang forgiver lang, hanggang blesser lang, then that's, that's the level of your respect and your relationship with Him. But one of the names of God, sabi ng Bible, His name is Jealous. He is a jealous God. And so we have to know that. We have to understand that the God that we are serving is a jealous God. And we need to fear Him. We need to respect Him. We need to love Him. We need to honor Him. Because He deserves all of that. And I pray, and I pray that this generation, as we approach, as we disciple, you know, this world, I pray that we are going to walk living in the fear of God. This is what the Bible says. They did not just know the fear of God, but they begin to live in the fear of God. That every day, because they love God so much, they cannot afford to hurt Him. Because they love Him so much, they cannot afford to break His heart. I pray that whatever breaks the heart of the Lord will also break your heart. I pray that whatever it is that hurts God will also hurt you. And that's now the time that I can say that you have now the fear of the Lord. That is the first step in the foundation and ushering the move of God in this generation. Number two, we need to have and cultivate friendship with the Holy Spirit. We need to cultivate that friendship of the Holy Spirit. The, the scripture that we have read a while ago, sabi dito, you know, the church began to experience peace and strength because they walk in the fear of God and the engagement of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is engaged in their life. The Holy Spirit is involved in their life. There is an involvement of the Holy Spirit in their life. They are aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so, the second thing is, is that passion, that hunger in your heart to be with the Holy Spirit, the awareness of His presence, the hunger for His visitation in your life, mga kapatid. This is my prayer that we are going to be passionate more and more in the Lord. You know what? This is the time that you have more time. This is the time that you are going to be closer and closer to God, mga kapatid. And so I pray that all the more your 
relationship with the Holy Spirit is going to be closer and closer and closer. Alam mo, He's always there for you. Sabi ni Jesus, I will never leave you helpless. I will send you the Holy Spirit. In the middle of all the crisis, Jesus did not leave us helpless. He has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given us the helper. He has given us the comforter. And it is the Holy Spirit. And He is with you today. The Holy Spirit wants to have relationship with you. He longs for your presence. He longs for your fellowship. And so today, more than anything else, I want you to just have that intimacy with the Holy Spirit in your life. Cultivate that. Your intimacy with the Holy Spirit will produce that impact that you have, that you are going to make in your life as well, mga kapatid. Amen? Today, discern Him. Be aware of His presence. He is the voice that says, do not give up. He is the voice that says, kaya mo yan. He is the voice that says, anak, mahal kita. He is the voice that says, anak, I have forgiven you. He is the voice that says, anak, you are precious in my sight. Never neglect the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. Have that intimacy. Pray and cry out for a fresh visitation that comes from God. When all of these things begin to happen, mga kapatid, I begin to cry out in my spirit. Sabi ko, Lord, I know that there is more than this. There is more than this. There is more than just coming to church. There is more than just, you know, um, having this uh, fellowship, Lord, there, music. There's more than this. I want, God, more of your spirit in my life. And see, when you have that intimacy with the Holy Spirit in your life, it will produce fruits. Fruits of love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, long-suffering, self, all of these fruits of the Spirit of God. And so, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is actually your life. Your life is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is not instant. Okay? It will grow in you. Amen? The fruit of the Spirit is not instant. Alam mo, when you say, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, mga kapatid, it's not just about you know, a one-time event. But it's a consistent, continuous flow, continuous infilling of the Holy Spirit. It is something that you grow with. That love is going to grow. That patience is going to grow in you. Amen? That self-control is going to grow with you. So I have a good news for you. Maybe you're not there yet, but God is moving. God is not done with you yet. Amen? Maybe, maybe you know, right now, maybe you feel like you're a failure. Maybe you feel like... Lord, Lord, and you know, maybe you feel that way, but I want to tell you something. Do not give up because God is still moving in your life. God is still at work in your life. Let Him finish what He has started a work in your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in you. Cultivate that friendship with Him. Cultivate that friendship with the Holy Spirit. Be aware of His presence. Amen. As we speak today, I can feel that the Holy Spirit is in this place. And He wants to touch you. He wants to bring you comfort. He wants to elevate you. He wants to give you peace in the midst of all this problem that you are in today. Amen. Receive that today. Receive the comfort and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. The third and the last in establishing, in ushering the move of God in this generation. Number one is the fear of the Lord. Number two is the friendship of the Holy Spirit. And number three is being faithful in doing the vision. Going back to our scripture, sabi po dito, they walk or they live in the fear of the Lord and in the engagement of the Holy Spirit, the church begin to increase in number. This is now the result because they are so faithful, focused on the vision that God has given them. Year 2020 is a year of clarity. Year 2020 is a year of vision. And maybe we did not start like grabe, super, you know, exciting and all of these things because, you know, some of us are caught unaware of all of these things that are happening. But perhaps maybe the Lord allow all of these things to happen because He wants to filter your vision. When everything has been said and done, anong naiwan sa'yo? The vision, the clarity. The clarity that what matters in this life is God's purpose and God's will over your life. As a matter of fact, Jesus put himself in this statement 
Sinabi ni Jesus, If I am not doing the will of my Father or the business of my Father, do not believe me. In other words, sinabi ni Jesus, This is my credentials. If I'm not doing the vision, if I'm not doing the business of my Father, do not believe me. And I pray that the church is going to come into that point that if we are not doing the business of the Father, then there is no point on people believing on us. If Jesus put His line, His life on these lines, then we have to put also our life on this line. We have to be faithfully doing the vision in preaching the gospel, in making disciples, in winning the lost. Amen, mga kapatid? I believe that the next revival is going to happen in the internet. I believe that the largest harvest field right now is in the internet. Alam niyo po ba, trivia lang po ha, alam niyo po ba, 73 million Filipinos are actually active in the social media, specifically yung Facebook. We are now 107 million people in the Philippines. More than half of that is socially active in Facebook. Nakita nyo? Half of the population of the Philippines is in social media. What I'm trying to say is this. The greatest harvest field right now, as we speak, is in the social media. If you want to reach out more than half of the Filipinos tomorrow, let's go, social media. That's where the harvest is. And so, that is why we need to engage ourselves in doing the vision. I want to see anointed content. I want to see spirit-filled content. Kasi kung ang tingin mo sa social media is harvest field, hindi playing ground, then you are going to behave properly. Amen? For me, I have decided that internet, social media, is the next biggest harvest field in my generation. I want to serve God. I want to be faithful in serving God, in doing the vision, and reaching out to this lost and dying world through this social media, mga kapatid. So focus your heart, your vision, in reaching out this generation. Amen? So this is the foundation. If you want to usher the move of God, establish the fear of the Lord. Number two is that you need to cultivate that friendship of the Holy Spirit. And then you have to be faithfully doing the vision. I pray that these words are going to minister to your hearts. Even I am not there in front of you, we are distant, but I believe that there is no distance in prayer. So I want to release that move of God over your life in the name of Jesus. Establish the fear of God over you. Have that hunger and desire for the move of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? And begin to be committed. I will be faithful in doing the vision. And you will see that even in this time of pandemic, the Lord can still, hallelujah, do a great and a mighty work. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to receive your challenge in our life. Lord, break everything that breaks your heart, God. Take everything, Lord God, in our hearts, Lord. Every dross, every sin, O oh God, every bondage. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to refresh our hearts today and you're going to put, O oh God, a brand new fear of the Lord in us in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, hallelujah, right now that your spirit, oh God, is moving in us, Lord. Cultivate, oh God, that friendship. God, give us the desire, increase that hunger, oh God, inside of our hearts, Lord, to know you more, oh God. Right here, right now, Lord. Thank you, God, for speaking to us, for ministering to our hearts, Lord. Lord, God, forgive us, Lord, forgive us, Lord. Come on, just let it go. Let's let it go to the Lord right now. Just allow God that the, the cleansing, the purification process over your life. Allow the Lord right now to just put a brand new heart over you right now. In the name of Jesus. We are a generation, Lord, that wants to usher your move, O oh God, in this time, in this moment, Lord. And so, God, give us the fear of the Lord. Give us the friendship of the Holy Spirit. And God, help us to be faithful in doing the vision, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for speaking to us, for moving in our hearts. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.